Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Andrew and in this video I have Lenovo IdeaPad 3 and Asus Pugio 2. The mouse is still working, the shell, I mean the plastics are still in one piece, the electronics are fine but the scroll wheel is broken. The Lenovo laptop is still working as well, but I got this laptop with a very specific problem. Whenever I try using the trackpad and the keyboard, the laptop starts having random freezing. Also the laptop was dropped while working and the case is broken in the corner. Well, let's start and do something with these devices. And first I will start with the mouse. This is an Asus Pugio 2 wireless gaming mouse. Actually I got this mouse a couple of years ago. A few months ago, weekend night, I lent this mouse to a friend. I got this thing in a bag. He moved some furniture in his home. The mouse fell from the desk onto the carpet, nobody saw the mouse and somebody stepped on the mouse and broke the scroll wheel. I mean nobody's fault here, it's a pure coincidence and it's happening. The problem is looking like it's very easy to solve, but this is going to be a different path. I start by searching what part from where is and where the parts belong. I have only one plastic which is from the scroll click and the other plastics are missing. When I took a closer look, I saw that the scroll wheel has a hexagonal mechanism and this will make the things much easier to fix. And also between the wheel holders, there is an out space for making modifications. So I took some of these hexagonal tools, but when I tried to place them in place, I mean the mechanism, all of these were too small or too big to fit. The idea is to use a part from a tool as an X for the scroll wheel. I choose a thicker key because I cannot just stick some thinner parts to the wheel mechanism. If I use glue here, I will just destroy the wheel mechanism. Before I start with anything, first using a red marker, I paint all the sides from the hexagon. With this, I can do more precise work and it will be clearly visible where I'm working, I mean on which side. Now I took a dermal and with a sandpaper head, I start making all the sides smaller and now to fit. Actually, I repeated this process a few times until I got the right dimensions. In the end, I used 1000 grit sandpaper to make all the fine adjustments. Now, this hexagon tool or the key is perfectly fitting into the scroll wheel mechanism. Now I move to make other measurements, adjusting the wheel and the LEDs. Actually, this mouse has LEDs that are inside the scroll wheel. After I got a clear picture of how and where everything is going to be, I have to do another adjustment and that is balancing the wheel. I put a wheel on the hexagonal key and I put a boat on the power drill. Here we can see how the wheel is not in the balance, but carefully and slowly, bit by bit, I found a good spot for the wheel. Now I use glue to stick the wheel in place. And finally I got almost perfect balance. Now I move to making a few more additional tests, lining up the things and taking additional measurements. Now I need to cut the rest of the key. Again, using dermal, I cut the key and I've done some fine adjustments because from the other side is a plastic part that is holding the wheel in place and that is pressing the scroll button from below.
Now again, I'm going to use the power drill to make the final adjustments. Here I used fine 1000 and 2000 grit sandpaper to make the plastic rounder and smoother. Finally, the scroll wheel is perfectly lining up and in place. Before I continue with assembly, I clean the work mat and the desk first. While assembling the mouse, I do some additional cleaning and checking the parts. The screws from the back are not from this mouse, only two screws were from the mouse. But this is not a problem, I have some screws that will fit fine here. And after making a couple of changes, this mouse is fully functional again. Now let's move to the laptop. I removed the bottom panel first. Actually, I removed the panel before also to find and locate the problem. And the problem was very simple to fix. I'm gonna try to explain this in a very simple way. Imagine that my left hand is the motherboard and my right hand is the flex cable. Now imagine that my fingers are the contacts on the motherboard and the contacts on the cable. When this laptop was dropped, the contacts were slightly shifted out of place and one or maybe two pins have done something like a short circuit. To some places on the motherboard, the voltages and the signals are too low to cause some damage but may cause problems like this one, like random freezing, some malfunction and etc. This is on a very micro level that mostly is almost impossible to detect the problem using some tools or anything else. But in this case, like this one, I always try to disconnect and reconnect the cables, checking the pins, the contacts and etc. 
This type of problem in general is rare, but it's happening. Usually the laptop won't show any signs, like a blue screen or anything. In device manager everything will look fine, even installing the drivers will be fine. But actually something and somewhere very tiny is off the place. The laptop from the inside is looking great. The motherboard has never been removed, never repaired. Maybe the thermal paste has been changed. Maybe the thermal paste has been changed and the cooling fan cleaned. But in general, this laptop is in a super great shape. After I'm done with this assembly, I start with the motherboard first, cleaning the thermal paste from the CPU. The thermal paste is almost dry and this is very normal. To clean the CPU, I'm using plastic sponger sticks, cotton buds, soft brushes and 96% isopropyl alcohol. Actually, I'm using these things to clean the CPUs or GPUs. As we can see here, there are small components on the CPU. Sometimes these components may be covered with a dry thermal paste and may not be visible, so the cleaning must be done very carefully. Also, nothing sharp and nothing metal, I mean metal tools, are not recommended here. Scratching the CPU or the GPU or even damaging some of these components is not a really good idea. Maybe you will ask, are these small components possible to repair? Theoretically and practically, yes, but the success rate of the repair is not that great. Long ago, when these components were larger, I have done repairs on the GPUs, I mean older GPUs, but not always successful. Anyway, damaging the motherboard with some components is not that easy, but if you work something, it's better to do with care and precaution.
and the motherboard is clean. But now I move to clean the other components, I mean the other parts of the motherboard, like the speakers, the Wi-Fi, the battery and etc. To clean all these components I used standard things as always, such as soft brushes, cotton buds, isopropyl alcohol and compressed air. Now I move to clean the cooling fan. On a serving plate I place a paper napkin and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I have done this because the dust and dirt will stick on the paper napkin and won't fly around and stick to the clean parts. The cooling pads from the heatsink are still good and the boat can be used again. And to clean the boat I used isopropyl alcohol and clean brush. So basically I washed the boat rubber pads. Also the isopropyl alcohol will make the boat pads a little bit softer and sticky again, almost like a new ones. The heatsink usually I wash it using warm water and dish soap. Anyway, the heatsink is metal, I mean copper only, no electronics and it can be washed with no problems at all. And finally, I'm on cleaning the case. To clean the case I use brushes, a vacuum cleaner, compressed air and isopropyl alcohol. Here as always, I pay attention to any single corner and any single detail. Because I love when the things are like new again. From the other side of the case is the keyboard. Here I start with a vacuum cleaner, brushes and compressed air. This is enough to remove the dust from around and below the keys. After basic cleaning I took a soft and fluffy napkin. On the napkin I put a little bit of anti-static glass cleaner and isopropyl alcohol. And very carefully I start cleaning the keyboard the keys, I mean around the keys and the whole palm rest. Again I use vacuum cleaner and brush to collect some leftovers from the dust. To clean the display I go again with the same napkin. These fluffy napkins are good for removing the dust and dirt that is in the corners and around the bezel. After I finished with the basic cleaning, I used isopropyl alcohol mixed with anti-static glass cleaner and other soft napkins. Unfortunately, in the middle the laptop display has horizontal scratch and this happens when the display touches the keyboard. And this is very usual with many laptops. And finally the top side. Here again I used isopropyl alcohol and anti-static glass cleaner. The top side is in a perfect condition except there is one scratch.
Now I move to assemble the laptop. And while assembly, I'm gonna make some upgrades and repair to the broken corner. And now the upgrades. On this machine I will place additional 8 gigs of RAM. So in total this laptop will have 12 gigs of RAM. And instead of 256 gigs of SSD, I will go with 1 terabyte M2. Also the both parts are used and left from other computers and laptops. I mean I have done some upgrades to other machines and these parts are basically leftovers but good leftovers and very useful. And finally is fixing the broken corner. Before from the inside I place a tape. Just now to protect the speaker. Here I'm going to use epoxy glue but for cold welding. This is like modeling clay. The boat needs to be well mixed and then applied on the surface or to some gap. After I applied the glue, I waited about 2 hours and then I used a scalper and I start shaping the glue. I mean, 
until the glue is still a little bit softer. After making the basic shape, I used dermal to make more precise shape. In the end, I used 1000 grit sandpaper to make the surface very fine and smooth. And as final thing, I used waterproof markers to paint the glue. After the paint was dry and after making some adjustments, the repair is looking a little bit better. Also, this is the cheapest solution for repairing the hole in the corner. The other solution here is changing the whole palm rest, but changing the whole palm rest is far more costly. And with the glue, this literally costs pennies to fix. And after making all these changes, we have a fully functional and upgraded laptop that is ready for use and fully functional, very nice gaming mouse. On this laptop, I install Windows 11 and everything is working pretty fine. In general, this is not a powerful laptop, but it's great for most daily basic tasks. I mean, watching some videos, watching some movies, listening to music, working on something and maybe playing some low requirement games. As always, I try to play some games. In this case is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I used all low settings and the frame rate is pretty low. But anyway, this is not a gaming laptop, but it's still a good laptop for everyday use. Let's go. Well, and this is all about this Lenovo laptop and this gaming mouse. And I'm very glad because everything is working fine now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back in function, fix, upgrade and even make some stuff better. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.